Hi good people, welcome to Devs and Dice. My name is Leif and this is Boxes of Shame, where I try my best to paint minis for D&D. Before we start this episode, I want to take a chance and welcome all new viewers to the channel. And if you like what I do here, hit the subscribe button and, you know, don't forget the bell icon to make sure that you don't miss any of our videos. So about four weeks ago, I was asked by one of my viewers, Chance and Kermit. This viewer asked if I could paint up a graveyard golem. I looked through my boxes of shame and <laughs> lo and behold, there it was. It seemed like a simple model to paint since most of it consisted of gravestones and such. Well, this turned out to be anything but a walk in the park. This turned out to be an epic battle where I would fail again and again. But I am getting ahead of myself. Let's start at the beginning, shall we? A couple of years ago I started getting into D&D. As my passion for D&D grew, so did my collection of minis. And like many others out there, I now have boxes of shame. Legions of unpainted minis. Now this is my underdog story. This is me painting every single one of my miniatures. All right, good people, so this is the Graveyard Golem from Reaper Bones Miniatures. Now, I usually try dry fitting the miniature just so I get a grip on how the assembled miniature should look. Once I have a good grasp of how a miniature looks, I start cleaning up some of the mold lines. Cleaning up mold lines is best done with an X-Acto knife, a scraper, or files. Once that was done, it was time to glue everything together. I use Army Painter Super Glue to get all of the parts fixed. I chose to use some super glue activator to expedite the process of gluing the miniature to the base. I used a more, I guess, flowy super glue to glue some of the rocks to the base and some gravel to the base. This was the first time I tried doing this, and the benefit is that super glue dries a lot faster than PVA. The downside is that it was a little bit messier. I primed the miniature in pure black. I started with a blue-grayish paint. The idea here was that I would use dry brush with different colors to give the illusion of rock. I had purchased some cheap makeup brushes that I have seen other miniature painters use, and I've heard good things said about them. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about rocks and stones. Usually we think of them as grey, but rock has a bunch of color variations. Here's an image where we can clearly see light grey, dark grey, reddish brown, moss green, and brown. So with that information I started using Crypt Wraith, a dark green color from Army Painter. Then I came in with some Stone Golem Grey a warm off-white color, and note that I do not clean the brush between, which just helps with blending some of the colors together. For the railing or fences on the back, I used Lead Belcher from Citadel Colors. Here I'm coming in with some Brain Matter Beige on the Angel that kind of looks like a shield. I saw some skeleton parts here and there on the Golem and I am painting them with Army Painter's Skeleton Bone.
Here I'm using some Venom Worm to dry brush on the, to the base. I knew I wanted to have a, a sort of a grassy base since the mini itself was very grey. Here I'm taking some of that lighter off-white color to start penciling in the eyes and mouth of the angel, which is the closest to a head this golem has. To get the eyes and mouth to pop even more, I hit them with a small dot of matte white. I used some of Citadel's Agrax earth shade on the skeletal parts. Usually I would have gone with the Seraphim Sepia, but I felt like the skeletal parts needed to be a little bit more dirty and more earthy. Then also I use some of that wash on the actual model here and there to just grime it up. I use some of Vallejo's dark rust wash to make the metal gate a bit more old and worn looking. Now, after I applied it, I noticed that it was quite effective, so I took a clean brush and wicked some of that wash away. Then I came in with Lead Belcher again and sort of redefined some of the highlights. And this is what we have. Okay, so far so good, right? Well, at this point, a couple of things happened. I was starting to lose focus. I guess I was getting tired, so I forgot to hit the record button for the next section. Sorry. Not to worry though, you didn't miss much. So I had a plan. I wanted to make the golem have glowy eyes. But as my mind drifted off, my fingers sort of took over the show and just, you know, started painting. I started applying a fluorescent green paint over the eyes. Now, for some reason, I thought it would be cool if the light sort of spread out from the eyes and hit the model, you know, here and there. Simply put, I started the process of doing an OSL, or object source lighting, and I was doing this without thinking. The fingers were in, my, in the driver's seat, and my mind was asleep in the back seat. As we return to the painting, I have already applied one layer of this green fluorescent paint, but for some reason I didn't really get a f good feel of where the light was coming from. So after some passes of that fluorescent green, this is what I have. I don't know exactly what I was thinking, but here I'm trying to sort of redefine the strength of an OSL. Here I'm coming in with some shining silver from Army Painter for another highlight pass on the gates or fencing on the golem's back. At first I was very careful, but then I almost did an overbrush which did bring the metal feel back. Here I'm coming in with some sort of glue that I'd never used before, and it was much more runny than I uh, ever thought. I quickly repaired this by just sort of corralling the glue onto the actual base uh, using just an old hobby brush. Once an area was covered with glue, it was a simple task to sprinkle on some of the flock. Thank you. 
Once the ground was covered with flock, I did my usual dilution of the glue, about 50-50 of white glue and water and then cover the base. I had some glue left which I added some flock to. I strengthened the mixture up a little bit by adding some more glue. This created sort of a paste and I used it to sort of create moss here and there on the golem. Old subscribers might remember that I used the same technique on the tree ant I painted up last year. Now I'm coming in back in with some matte white on the eyes and the mouth. This time around I wanted to go around the golem and sort of define some highlights which would later be glazed over with that fluorescent paint. And this time around I also mixed two fluorescent paints because I wanted a more cold light so I put some of that blue in there as well. You can see that I'm trying to build up the light and sort of get a sense of intensity and direction. Here I'm even desperately trying to sort of come in with some yellow fluorescent light on the eyes to make them look even more bright. This is what I had so far, and honestly, I decided to take a break. At this point, I was really unhappy with the results. I even checked it with my wife and stuff like that, and I said, hey, does this look like light coming out of its eyes? And she was honest, and she said, well, okay, I can see now the direction, but it looks like somebody has thrown slime on the golem. At this point, I really had to think a lot. What did I want to do? What was my original vision? I wanted to have glowing eyes, not a goddamn disco happening from somewhere. And also, the light was everywhere. I hadn't thought when I did the original OSL. It was really tough. I didn't know what to do. But then, I scratched this up as a learning experience. I started covering the affected area or afflicted area with some matte black color. This seemed to work. I came in with some of that gray colors I previously used. This time I just put them all on my wet palette. I started bit by bit dry brushing the golem to build up the layers of light. I even did some overbrushing on the shield just to get it to pop out a little bit more. Now everything went well until I started dry brushing the face a little bit more intensely. The color just rubbed off and underneath was that poisonous green fluorescent color that I now hated so badly. I tried with black again, but it didn't seem to work. So then I took one of my brushes that I've actually cut down to make it more of a cleaning brush. I brushed it all off from the face, making sure that I had a clean slate. Then I came in with some brush on primer from Army Painter. Once I had coverage, I let the mini dry properly. And once it had dried, I carefully, carefully did some dry brushing on the face, slowly building up the light layer by layer.
Now once that had dried, I started to define the shadow areas with some Nolan oil. And then, of course, I used some Agrax Earthshade. Using both of these washes, I tried to blend everything together again, making it look like the mistake had never happened. But I left this to dry properly before moving forward. Then I came in with some white to the eyes. This time around, I totally ignored the mouth. And I was sick of that green and I didn't I wanted a more cold look, so I went with the blue fluorescent instead. Alright, let's see the final results, shall we? Alright mini painters, so what did you think? Please tell me in the comments below. And for my sake, I think I learned a lot. I found out a bit more about fluorescent paints and how they work. I took a brave decision and redid the parts I wasn't happy with. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give it a like. If you want to see more of these videos, then please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon to make sure that you don't miss any of our videos. Alrighty, so with that, I wish you all a great day. Until next time, tootie loo.